Well, sticking with tech, Microsoft's venture capital fund is on the hunt for the next big AI company, following the success of its investment with OpenAI. Joining us now is Michael Stewart. He's M12's managing partner. Michael, it's great to have you. So talk to us. We, we were just um, citing a note from Oppenheimer here a moment ago talking about the investment opportunity or maybe some of the questions surrounding uh, AI investments here, at least in the short term. I'm curious just from your perspective, given your experience, what you make of this excitement surrounding AI and, and how you're shaping your strategy to identify the investments that make the most sense within this sector. Yeah, thank you, Shauna. We're looking at this from a, a long-term point of view because we are investing in startups that could take some number of years to grow into their business plans, and I think reveal, um, you, know, you know, the the technology's promise, which uh, is is the basis of the excitement of so many investors and also entrepreneurs entering the space. So, it's you know, it's it's not really what we do at the venture fund. I think to to focus on perhaps like the day to day um, market as much as what could be upcoming. What is what is beneath um this inflection and the value that's being created here we think is fundamentally unlike other technology trends that certainly that i've seen in my uh career tech you know developing technology or investing and it's reflected by the capital coming into the space but also the entrepreneurs who are leaving uh sometimes great high-paying big tech company jobs to found companies with other like-minded uh individuals but isn't that also just potentially a story, Michael, from those entrepreneurs and from the investors coming into the space? How do you suss out kind of the reality from the buzz of just slapping the use of the term AI onto everything? Yes. Yeah, we are absolutely not looking for a pastiche of AI on top of a, a, a you know a company we've all seen before. And you know we apply a, a, a strategic lens to every new company we look at. You know first. Is the company creating value? Is the company uh, doing something useful for the customer? But there's there's four real factors that we uh, analyze, and they're called the four Ds: data, dividends, distribution, and delight. And each one is an aspect of both the technology infrastructure, the data that goes into the model, and in the in the sense of data is the new oil and other uh, uh, contexts where we may have heard of the importance of data before. Data really is the, the ingredient that makes the application or the service unique here. And paying off you know, for, for the customer, if you're an entrepreneur and a team and you're not speaking to those two pieces, the, the data that you're using to stay different and the, the results that you give back to the customer, it's really like those two steps um, are the ones that entrepreneurs should focus on the most. Beyond that, getting to the customer, the distribution piece um, is where we have an advantage investing on behalf of Microsoft in startups who could reach these enterprise customers that are oftentimes inundated, flooded with so many new signals, so many companies um, arriving in the space. We want to help use Microsoft as a partner in the future to reach those customers under the um guardrail safety and and reputation that microsoft brings you know you know as a as a partner to them and then the last is really delight and that's that's kind of a it's a qualitative factor that we think about but it's just the excitement that someone feels in using a new service it can touch different kinds of ai startups differently but it's certainly something that it's your voluntary choice to use an application to to work with a company because there is so much choice, we're, we're looking at something like 10,000 new AI startups created over the last two years. Um, in that kind of environment, you've got to have customer enthusiasm and love as a key piece of it that's not always technological. It could be something of a matter of taste. Well, Michael, I, I guess when you're trying to suss out what opportunities make the most sense and you list it off, the, there are thousands of new AI startups right now, right? A very, very crowded field. Is there a next? Open AI, is it, are, are we early enough in that cycle? And, and I guess w when you see that growth opportunity, what do you think the focus of that company or should be or needs to be in order to have that type of success? Yeah, and, and that's where, like, again, let me delineate between the technology magic that a startup can bring and 
their ability to create a big business that's that's of scale and of consequence again to to collaborate with Microsoft. I think that you know looking for a new singular winner in the technology race is a very tough thing for venture capitalists to do because you you'd be really looking for um, research breakthroughs or other uh, predictions about where the technology is headed and its architecture or the science that could be in some ways less important than focusing on the go-to-market, servicing what customers want. Um, why would I feel that way? Well, we've seen technology advances come that completely change our mind about the status of the, of, of the space technologically, but then it's usually just a few months or a year later that there are alternatives to using the technology from other suppliers, other, you know, other labs, other, other creators of the technology. And we think, again, from an investing point of view, it's going to be the business creators, their go-to-market skill, and their ability to sell to enterprise that will let us look at these businesses the way we would look at any other business, whether it's a public or private company. The faster an entrepreneur comes to that realization, and thinks about the unit economics, communicates it to investors, mm -hmm. and realizes it in a business plan, the more likely you'll create one of the lasting companies of the future, one of the new top uh, technology giants of, of the future. All right, Michael Stewart, we gotta leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Michael Stewart is a managing partner over at M12.